All right, so in this section, I'm going to prove a basic theorem about uniform continuity, which is that if you have a function on defined on some closed interval a, b, and you know that it's continuous on that interval, then it's actually automatically uniformly continuous on that interval, okay? Um, so let me actually just state the theorem first. Uh, so this is theorem 19.2. Uh, if F is continuous on a closed interval A, B, and remember that if we're talking about a closed interval, it's kind of implicit that A and B have to be finite numbers because we never really consider an infinite endpoint for an interval to be closed because we don't want to actually include the point infinity in the interval. So if f is continuous on a closed interval a, b, uh, then f is uniformly continuous on a, b. OK? So um, this is actually, if you remember uh, the other one of the other main theorems we proved about continuity on closed intervals was that a continuous function on a closed interval um, is bounded and it achieves its maximum and minimum value. And if you remember, we used the balzano weierstrass theorem and there was this kind of thing where there, we could, you know, you could imagine playing this game of trying to build an unbounded function on a closed interval. And then basically the, you know, if you did it by sort of creating these like spikes that got bigger and bigger, um, ultimately, those spikes would end up having to cluster around some point, right? And that's basically what the balzano weierstrass theorem captures, is that uh, if you have a sequence that's stuck inside of a closed interval, it has some kind of a convergent subsequence that approaches some point inside that interval. And so that point, uh, the limit of that convergent subsequence is one of the sort of like clustering points of the uh, points in the general sequence, right? Uh, so you can actually, the argument here is like, Basically, it's very similar, okay? So um, imagine trying to build a non-uniformly continuous function on A, B. So the way we would have to do this, right, would be like, i.e., for some epsilon greater than zero, uh, there would have to be pairs of X and Y arbitrarily close together uh, such that F of X minus F of Y is greater than epsilon, right? So it's basically like, it's not enough to just make one pair of X and Y uh, have this property where F of X minus F of Y is greater than epsilon, right? Absolute value, obviously. Uh, because you have to keep making, every time you make one pair of X and Y where this is true, then it's like you have to make another one that are even closer together because this has to be, you have to be able to find pairs that get arbitrarily close together, okay? So there sort of have to be like infinitely many pairs of X and Y where this is true and they have to get like closer and closer together basically. So let's actually like imagine trying to play that game, right? So let's imagine we're trying to build our non-uniformly continuous function. Let's say, you know, here's A and here's B, okay? So let's pick a pair of X and Y. So let's say like this is our like, you know, I don't know, x1 and then y1. And then we say, okay, f of x1 is gonna be this, and then f of y1 is gonna be at least epsilon different, right? So uh, let's say this is um, you know, greater than epsilon, right? Uh, so that, that satisfies that f of x minus f of y is bigger than epsilon, right? But now we need a pair that's like even closer together, right? So let's make another pair. 
and they're gonna be even close together to each other, right? So obviously we can like, okay, I'm gonna actually erase this. Of course, we're trying to define like an entire continuous function. So let's say we just make a line in between these, right? And then we'll make like another line over here. Oops. Okay. So um, now this is, uh, you know, here, let me kind of make another sort of a dotted line here. Right, so we're gonna make these like segments kind of. And then at the end, if we do it right, we can just like join them together with some continuous line, right? So this, this width is supposed to be greater than epsilon is what I'm saying, right? So here's like x2 and y2, and they're even closer to each other than x1 and y1 were, okay? But now that's still not good enough because there has to be another pair that's even closer than x2, y2. So let's make them really close together. So like x3, y3. So it's like getting really steep now, right? Okay, and then keep doing this, right? So keep picking xn and yn closer and closer uh, together. So what goes wrong? Well, I kind of already gave the answer away. And if not, I mean, hopefully you can kind of see the similarity here with the previous theorem we talked about. Um, it's the balzano weierstrass theorem tells us, that tells us that there is some point where these cluster. And not only that there's a point where these cluster together, but that the point the point where these cluster together is actually inside the interval AB, which is a real problem for us, right? Because we have to define the function for every point in AB, right, in this whole interval. So we're not allowed to have a place where these cluster together because like, how, how are you gonna define a continuous function where there are points like that get, that are still stuck epsilon away from each other arbitrarily close to this like cluster point, you know? Uh, so that's basically the, the issue. So this is how the proof goes. So proof of theorem uh, 19.2. So uh, if F is not uniformly continuous on AB, then for each N, we can find Xn and yn such that um, xn minus yn absolute value is less than one over n. So this is just like, since, since if f is not uniformly continuous, oh, oh, sorry, um, then there exists an epsilon greater than zero such that all of this stuff is true, right? Um, that uh, goes right here, okay? Uh, for each n, actually, yeah. Let me let me just move this here. So there exists an epsilon greater than zero such that. Okay, so there's a bad. There's like some small enough epsilon so that there's no good choice of delta, basically, right? Like it's impossible to make delta small enough that like every pair of x and y that are within delta from each other will make f of x and f of y be within epsilon from each other. So no matter how small delta is, uh, there's some bad pair of x and y. And so what we're doing is we're picking specific values of delta. Like we're picking delta equals one, then delta equals one over, you know, one half, delta is one third, delta is one quarter. And for each of those values of delta, we're saying there has to be a bad pair of x and y, right? And by bad pair, I mean a pair of x and y that are within delta, but for which f of x and f of y are not within epsilon, right? So we're finding a bad pair for each delta where delta is like, one over n, okay? Uh, so then Balzano-Weierstrass tells us that 
there exists a subsequence x and k such that x and k converges to some x naught in a b right why is it in a b that's because um a b the closed interval is closed since a b is closed right so this is this is basically our our you know clustering the point where stuff clusters around and so we expect there to be we, we expect to be able to find some contradiction by like invoking the continuity of f right at at x naught okay basically basically we should be able to say that f actually can't be continuous at x naught under these assumptions okay um oh such that oh sorry i forgot to say so xn minus yn is less than one over n but f of xn minus f of yn is greater than epsilon okay that's that's important uh okay anyway so um right so these x and k approach x naught and then um then let's see we clearly also have y and k right where n k is still the same it's the same set of indices as the subsequence x n k and y n k actually has to approach x not x not as well and that's just because since you know um you know clearly the limit uh as x n of x n minus y n equals zero by construction right since the since the yn get arbitrarily close to, um, so so this means uh, so you know limit of x and k minus y and k is also equal to zero, right? Uh, so th this is just because we chose them to be within like one over n of each other for each n. So that obviously just directly means that uh, you know x n minus y n approaches zero. Uh, so Okay, so y n k also approaches x naught. Um, so that means that absolute value of f of x n k minus f of y n k approaches absolute value of f of x naught minus f of x naught, oops, which is zero, but we also, by construction, know that f of x and k minus f of y and k is greater than epsilon for all k. This is a contradiction. Okay? So it all worked out pretty much exactly as we expected that if we thought we could find pairs of points that are consistently at least epsilon apart from each, or the values of f at least, are consistently at least epsilon apart from each other, but these pairs of points in the in the domain keep getting closer and closer, then they end up clustering around this point x naught. And then um, if you look at x naught and say, well, f is supposed to be continuous there, um, then you run into problems. Okay, so that's that's actually it for this uh, section. And then in the next one, I'll we'll talk about um, Cauchy sequences. Cauchy sequence, uh, how uh, uniformly continuous functions preserve Cauchy sequences. Okay.